Hello guys and welcome. Um, sorry for not being online for such a long time, but in this video I want to share with you guys the progress that I'm making on a new game that I'm working on currently. Stick with me for this video guys and you will know which game do I want to make, which techniques I was using and how did I implement them and we will just have fun. Yeah, I hope you will enjoy it. So, basically, I want to make a game like Worms. No, not these Worms. <laughs> these ones. And when I say a game like Worms, I mean a game where you can also destroy the ground with some weapons, you, where you can fight with other guys uh, shooting with, uh, with some weapons, yeah. And the core difference between uh, Worms and my game that I want to make is that I want to make it not to be turn-based strategy game, right? I want it to be like a Dota or Counter-Strike where you play real-time, where all players play at the same time and they make their decisions, uh, play strategically and etc. Unfortunately, I still don't know uh, who I want to be the characters for this game. Uh, I definitely don't want Worms to be characters of this game, but yeah, that is something that I will have to think about in the future. But currently it actually doesn't matter at all, because the first thing that I decided to do is to make a ground and ground destruction, and I know that to solve these problems, people out there are using marching squares algorithm. And it's actually really straightforward and I will try to explain it to you in a second. So right off the bat, I've generated this field of points, I should say. And each point uh, can be either 0 or 1. And uh, on this screen you can see uh, this field and where there is a blue point it is 1 and where there is no point it is 0. And if we for example take um, 4 of such points, right, um, which can be either 0 or 1, whatever, right, um, if you think about it there can only be 16 different possible situations of these uh, 0 and 1s, right, for example if we say we write uh, this situation as 1, uh, if you write it uh, clockwise, right? Uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. There will only be 16 different situations uh, and in our case uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, it is this one. And and you know guys, uh, you can guess it, uh, in our mesh we will have uh, all sorts of, this of these situations and if we apply um, and generate all these uh, little meshes for all the corresponding situations we will build a bigger mesh uh, which will look, uh, I guess, great. <laughs> So I've implemented this mesh generation algorithm and for these blue points the generated mesh looks just like this. Um, yeah, it looks kind of ugly, but <laughs> what you're gonna do? I've changed the randomness of this point field generation algorithm and uh, now the mesh looks like this. Uh, then I've decided to upscale this field and it looks like this. Um, still kind of ugly, but yeah. Then I decided to apply this algorithm for some real wor world situation, right? And um, I've generated this hill and the mesh for it looks like this. Um, kind of nice, I think. Yeah. And right after that I drew this forest image and applied the algorithm again as well. And it looks like this. And of course I did not get it from the first time. I've had a lot of uh, weird errors like this and uh, I had to debug them a lot. But yeah, in the end it, is a it was worth it. <laughs> and please take a look at the geometry that we have and it looks really great I think. 
But also, if you take an even closer look, you will see that there is a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, unnecessary triangles that we don't actually need to draw. It is really, really heavy thing for GPU to draw. Yeah, but don't worry, we will handle it later in the video. Yes, yeah, so my next step was to generate the UV coordinates for all of the vertices in this mesh. And after generating it, I can now apply a texture, and it looks like this. Then I decided to optimize this weird issue with a huge amount of unnecessary triangles. And the algorithm that I've come up with it looks like the following. So let's say that we have uh, some image, just random image, okay, and we need to generate a mesh for it. And the idea here is that we need to split the world recursively into two parts on each step, right? So at the first step we split the world like this, for example, split the world again by halves on this axis, then we split the world again here, uh, then we split it, for example, here, 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 right? And uh, when we reach some minimum cell size that we uh, predefine, right, uh, if we reach it, we will try to see if uh, the cell is fully filled, like for example this one, if it's fully empty and if it's some custom like shape, which is one of these shapes that I've described earlier. Then we combine all these uh, meshes, right? And yeah, we say that uh, we generated mesh for like this section. But let's for example say that if we uh, like dive deep into this one, into these sections, right? And if you try to look, all these, all these cells are filled. And there is no need to generate like triangles for these sections, right? And it means that we can combine them into, into a single into a single shape, like we can combine it into into this shape. And let me give you another example. Uh, for example, we decided to dive deep into here, right? Then we dive deep here, 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 right? Uh, what we what we will see? All of these triangles will be recombined into into these triangles, right? Into this shape. And if we dive deep dive deep here right? Uh, then all of these will be recombined into, into this shape. And I think you can uh, start, uh, start guessing uh, what we will have in the end, right? Um, all of these will be recombined into this shape because all of them are fully filled. And this one as well will be recombined. And if you notice th is that all of these shapes as well will be recombined into a bigger one. And it is very important. On each step of this like recombination, uh, the shapes will be recombined into these, into these. Both of these will be recombined into a single shape. Yeah. I hope that uh, it's clear and it makes some sense. And it will save us a lot, a lot of triangles. So I've implemented this algorithm and you can already start seeing the difference. In the places where there were a lot of unnecessary triangles, uh, there are now bigger ones. And in the places which are closer to borders, there are still some smaller triangles which make the mesh to look detailed. I hope you're not tired, because the next thing that I decided to implement is explosions. And explosions are much easier to implement than everything we've done so far. So, let's say that we have this image. And we want to explode it around this point within, for example, this radius, right? And to do that, in the source image, uh, we will remove all the pixels within this radius. And we will then regenerate the mesh. If we, for example, uh, had the mesh which was like this for all of these things, we will regenerate the mesh it should look like this. Then I decided to implement some custom shapes for the explosions. This work was not really that interesting. 
But I thought that it will be just great to see some different types of explosions in the game. The really fun part came when I decided to implement some grenades. And you can guess how not fun it was from this video. So, it was a failure, as you could see. First is that I've realized that Unreal Engine doesn't even support 2D collisions. And second one is that this 3D mesh that we've generated cannot handle collisions for our grenades just because it is flat. So, I definitely need to rethink the way I approach this problem. But before I do that, let me show you one crucial change that I made. As you can see now, I don't even need to generate any mesh to display the image. I just render this image above pre-generated triangles. But how does our game handle collisions now, when we don't have any mesh to collide with? To resolve this problem, I've implemented an algorithm which just extracts outer edges for a mesh. And then, using those outer edges, I just generate a 3D mesh uh, to collide with. It looks something like this. Well, so now is the time to make further steps. I couldn't wait anymore to implement some weapons, and the first weapon that I decided to implement is a grenade. As for this game, so far I want to make everything on my own, so to draw the grenade and all other stuff and art, I need to find some painting software. And I used to use Photoshop before, but to be honest, 20 bucks is too expensive for me per month. And I decided to find some alternatives. And the good free alternative which I found was Krita. Krita is free and it contains all the toolset that I need to draw something. I'm not really good when it comes to painting or drawing. I don't really know the difference. But I've started working on this grenade and I like how it looks. And the first thing that I decided to do is to teach those grenades to fall on the ground. And... Uh, well, give me one more try, please. <laughs> well, now grenades are falling onto the ground and... The next thing that I want to do is to make them explode once they touch it. And of course, as you can see, we should destroy the grenade once it has been exploded. As you can see, our grenades exploded right after they touched the ground. But this is actually not what I want. Because I want our grenades to explode only after some time has elapsed. So I did just that. I've implemented the behavior for a grenade to explode only after some time has expired. Also, I decided not to remove the behavior for grenades with an instant explosion when they touch the ground. The reason for this is that later when I make this game I want to have some weapons and projectiles which explode right after they touch the ground. For example, uh, I don't know, maybe some bazooka projectile or, I don't know, incendiary. I hope that it makes some sense, because they need to explode after they touch something. But for now our grenades look just like this. Then I've drew this bazooka projectile that I was talking before, and I've put it into the game, and now when it will fall and touch the ground, uh, it will explode. And you know guys what? I think it's a good finish point for now, because we've done quite a lot. I have very ambitious plans for this game, and I want to work all my free time that I have on it, but on the other hand I do not have too much of this free time, because I'm trying to get my driving license and me and my wife want to relocate, so yeah. But anyway I will continue working on it, and I will keep you up to date guys with what I'm making, and I will share with you the progress of making this game in the future episodes. With that being said guys, I really really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon guys, goodbye.